Moving averages are probably one of the most common indicators that most traders use. And in today's ThinkScript tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make your very own stacked moving average indicator. Instead of needing to manually add in all of the moving averages that you like to look at, you can combine all of them in one file and even have some simple logic for things like an arrow every time we go from, say, stacked moving averages to not stacked moving averages. Now to get started, let me first come in to our studies icon right up here. That's where we can create a new study. I'll delete the one that we already have since we're going to be writing this from scratch. To create your new study, click this create button and start by giving the study a name. I'll call mine TI stacked moving averages. Now we can delete the code that's already inside of the panel that they give available to us, and this allows us to start writing our own code. Now the first thing we need to decide is which moving averages we'd like to plot. For this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using the 8 period exponential moving average, the 21 period exponential moving average, the 34 period exponential moving average, and then we'll move on to some simple moving averages as well, a 50 and a 200 SMA. This will give you an idea of how to plot not only EMAs inside of Thinkorswim, but also SMAs. Now let's get started first with the 8 period exponential moving average. We can start by writing the word plot since we'd like to see this moving average on our chart. And there I can say plot, give this variable a name, I'll call it EMA8. And Thinkorswim has a function that makes it really easy to access exponential moving averages. It's called exp average, and this takes in two different parameters. Now, parameters are essentially variables that need to be inputted for this exponential average function to be run on whatever you're looking at. So here, we're going to be using the closing price. That's the first parameter is what kind of price do you want to use for your moving average? Is it the high, the open, the low, the close? What is it? So we're going to be using the close. The second variable is the length, and there we can say eight, since this is an eight period exponential moving average. Now if I click okay here, and if I just apply this, you'll see that we already see this line on our chart. Now the default color that Thinkorswim assigns is going to be the color that you see on your particular chart. Most likely it should be cyan, but in case you see something else, that's controlled by Thinkorswim. So if you want to manually control not only the color of the line, but maybe even the painting style, so when we get to the SMAs, we'll make them dashed, that's where you start to use some formatting tricks. Now for the 8 period exponential moving average, we'll give this a color of cyan, but I don't want this to be randomly determined by Thinkorswim. I want to specify it. So to do that, I'll say ema8.set default color, that's the function to be able to apply the formatting on whatever variable you just created, and in our case that's EMA8, and there we'll say color.cyan. Now if I click apply, you shouldn't see anything change, but this color will always be cyan, that's the beauty of this. Now let's practice this one more time with the 21 EMA. So I'm going to copy that same line that we just created, this plot EMA8, and I'll paste it one more time. The fundamental basis of this function for each of our exponential moving averages is going to be the same, but the two values that change are the eight in this case and the eight here, the length along with the variable name. Now for EMA 21, we'll set, actually first, before we set this default color, if I click apply, you'll see again, Thinkorswim has given this a default color that it's chosen. I'd like to have the EMA21 be a color of magenta, that's purple, so we can define that manually. I'll say EMA21 set default color, color dot magenta. Now we repeat this one more time for the 34. You should be getting a good hang of this at this point. 34 for our variable name and 34 for our length. Now one more time, if I click apply, you'll see the colors that Thinkorswim chooses are random. So that's why I like to choose my own colors. It makes it a little easier to see, plus I'm sure most of you have a color that you like to use for a particular moving average. Now for the 34 EMA, I'll be using the color of yellow. So we can say color.yellow, apply, and now we have a cyan, a magenta, and a yellow EMA on our charts. The 8, the 21, and the 34. 
Now it's time to move on to the SMAs. It's a similar concept for the SMAs, but the function that we use to define the simple moving average is different. And it's not just simp average like you might guess, which I think causes most people to have some issues. Now let's start by first defining our SMA variable, so SMA50. And here the function that Thinkorswim uses for simple moving averages is simple moving average. Same idea, takes in two different parameters. The first one is the type of price you'd like to use. The second one, the length. Now if I click apply, you can see we have one additional line. Hopefully this also demonstrates how this can get confusing a little quickly if you let Thinkorswim assign the colors. Now you're starting to see some colors overlap just by a little bit, but it can get confusing as you add more onto your charts. So first, let's start by giving this a color, and we can still use, say, the default color of yellow. So if I click OK here, you'll see this starts to look very similar, but we can distinguish them by adding in a simple dash. So I'll say SMA50.setStyle for the line style. And here, for our line style, I'm going to say curve.short underscore dash. Now, you have a few different options available for the curve, and you can find them even inside of this right panel in the reference. If you come in, you'll find a look and feel section. And there, you can start to find all of the different variables you have available to you. For example, for colors, you can come in here and if you click more details, you'll get a chance to see all of the colors available inside of Thinkorswim. It's hidden behind here, but that's where you can find things like colors. Where do you have things like short dashes? What are the different options available? Now let me come back to our charts here. We'll come to charts and that short dash looks something like this. So now it's a little easier to tell what is the simple moving average compared to the exponential moving average. Now we repeat this one more time for the 200 SMA, and that's going to be all of the different moving averages that we need and care to see on our charts for this tutorial. The last piece of the puzzle I'll show you then is bringing all of this together to have a bullish stacked and a bearish stacked variable so you can very easily tell when we go into stacked mode from non-stacked mode. So let's first create the 200 SMA. So I'm going to copy all of these variables in. You'll have an error that says, hey, the SMA50 variable is already used. So we will change the name here to SMA200. Make sure to change the length here to 200. And we'll also need to change the formatting down here to be connected to the 200 SMA variables. Now, instead of making this a color of yellow, I'm going to make this a color of white. And just like that, we now have our 50 SMA, or excuse me, our 50 SMA, our 200 SMA, and we have our three different exponential moving averages as well. Now, the last piece of the puzzle that we can do here is create a bull stacked and a bear stacked variable, which allows us to see when do we go into the stacked mode. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called def bull stacked. This variable is a definition since right off the bat, we don't need to see anything plotting on our charts. I'll say uh, def bull stacked, and here we can say EMA8 is greater than EMA21, and EMA21 is greater than EMA34, and you might even say something like SMA50 is greater than SMA200. That might be the conditions you'd like to use for bull stacked. Now conversely, bear stacked is going to be the exact opposite here. I'll say bear stacked, and all of these signs are going to be the opposite side. So the eight period exponential moving average must be less than the 21, the 21 must be less than the 34, and the 50 must be less than the 200. Now if I click apply, nothing will happen on our charts. That's because we don't have any plot variable associated with this yet. So we need to create a plot variable here, and I'll create a separate plot variable called plot bull stacked plot. I'm going to add in the word plot at the end just so we know this is the plot and it needs to be a different name from the definition. Now here we can add in bull stacked and actually let me first show you what happens if you put in only bull stacked here. So if we put in only bull stacked now we need to define the formatting strategy so for this I'd like to see an arrow so I'll say bull stacked plot dot set painting strategy. This is the function that we use to define the arrows and there we say the painting strategy 
should be a Boolean arrow up anytime we have this bull stacked condition being met. If I click apply, you'll see a lot of arrows on your chart. The reason for that is this arrow will plot any time that we have a bullish stacked moving average, not just the first time that we have a bullish stacked moving average. So to fix that, and actually before I do that, I'm going to click OK and just move this over so we can see our charts actually as we do this. We want to see the arrow only on this candle right here, the first time we get into the stacked moving average, not any one of these other arrows. So to do that, we come back to our code, scroll down, and to the bull stacked here, I'm going to add in one additional condition which says and not bull stacked on the previous bar. So the exclamation is basically your inverse, it's saying hey this condition should not be true or this variable in this case. And the array right here, the bracket one, tells us this must not be true on the previous bar. So now if I click apply, you'll see all of the other arrows on our chart disappeared, and we have just that one green arrow plotting. Now if you want to change this color from say green to something else, you can do so by using a similar uh, method here as set default color. I'll leave it as green uh, just for the time being since that's the default. Now, next thing we need to do is create the bear stacked plot. So I'll copy this one more time. Again, we have an error that the bull stacked plot variable has already been used. So there I'll say bear stacked plot. Now all of the variables inside of here need to also be connected to our bear stacked variables. So I'll say bear stacked must be true on the current bar and it must not have been true on the previous bar. For our variable for our painting strategy, we can say bear stacked plot dot set painting strategy, painting strategy dot boolean arrow, and in this case, down. Now if I click apply, OK, and apply so we can come to our charts. Now let's take a look at what we have here. If I zoom out, you can see that we do have the bearish arrow, but that bearish arrow is getting merged in with the background of my chart since Thinkorswim has given this a default color of gray. So let's go ahead and fix that along with make these arrows just a little bit bigger. So I'll come back into our code and now we're going to give each of these two variables a color just so we control exactly what color we'd like to see on our chart. So for bull stacked plot, I'll say set default color and we can continue to give this a color dot green, but this time we have selected that. Now for our bear stacked plot, which is the one that was giving us issues, I'll say bear stacked plot dot set default color, and we'll give this a color dot light red, just so it's a little easier to see on our charts. And maybe we make this light green as well, just to be a little bit more creative. Now the last thing we need to do is change the weight of these arrows so they're a little easier to see. So to do that, I'm going to say bull stacked plot dot set line and this should also auto fill for you just in case you're curious to learn the function but it's set line weight and there the weight goes from one to five that's the range one is the smallest weight and five is the largest weight so let's go somewhere in between with the weight of three same thing on our bear stacked plot so i'll say bear stacked plot dot set line weight three apply okay apply, and now you can see the arrow is a little bit bigger on our charts. Zoom out, and they should be a little bit easier to see. You can see the light green arrows along with the dark red arrows, and just in case you want to make them even bigger, we can give this a weight of five here, apply, and that should be the biggest weight that Thinkorswim has available to us. Hopefully you found this Thinkorswim tutorial to be useful in understanding how to create your own stacked moving average indicator. It was a fairly simple indicator, most of it was copy pasting, but through it you learned not only how to reference exponential moving averages, but compare that to simple moving averages. You learned how to set colors based off of whatever color you'd like. You learned a little bit around how to read some of the documentation inside of this right panel in the reference panel. And you also learned how to then create your own variable to give you an arrow whenever you go from stacked to not stacked moving averages, along with that trick to make sure you only see that arrow for the first time. I hope you found this ThinkScript tutorial useful. 
Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.